Welcome to the online MIT lab. Today, we will be talking about gene regulation. And to demonstrate this, we have two upscale models, lactose operon and tryptophan operon. Okay, so first it looks like we will be looking at the lactose operon. As you can see, here we have an extended part of the DNA segment that continues out this way and obviously that way. But we are zooming in on the specific lactose gene that will be coded for with the promoter series starting here and lactose Z, Y, and A here. But first, we have these things called operons. This is a repressor protein and this is the operon lactose. Now as we can see, without the lactose, the repressor protein will be shaped like so and will be able to perfectly fit into the protein coding segment of the DNA and allow for the transcription to continue. But if we have enough lactose in the system, it will bind at the active site of the repressor protein, causing it to change shape and become its active form, where then it will not be able to fit into the DNA. This is an example of a negative feedback loop. And what will happen now is the transcription of the protein will stop because we cannot continue to form a complete DNA segment. Now, if we examine tryptophan operons, it's a little different. Instead, without the tryptophan, the repressor protein will be in this shape and will not be able to fit into the protein at the operon. Apparently, our DNA segment has switched sides, so I will stand here now. Anyways, so with the tryptophan in its place at the active site of the repressor protein, all of a sudden, we can now fit into the DNA segment, completing the DNA and allowing transcription to occur in the protein. That concludes our simple demonstration and model of these operons. Are there any questions from the MIT student labs? Students. Ah yes, row three. What do you say? In the lac operon, is the repressor active or inactive? Well, you see, the repressor is act in its active form when the lactose is present, but the active form does not allow for coding to take place. Yes, young, young quiet sir in row four. In the TRP operon, is the repressor active or inactive when the tryptophan is present? Well, you see, what happens with the tryptophan is that when there is a lack of tryptophan in the system, it will fall out of the active site. So it is clearly active when we have the tryptophan present. But what happens is we run out of tryptophan, and we don't have any more, and it cannot bond. All the way in the back, yes. What is the product of the TRP operon and the LAC operon? Well, like any DNA segment, the, TR, the, the TRP operons and the LAC operons both lead to the transcription of a protein, whether it be tryptophan or the lactose. And finally, what is more common for each type of operon, the gene in the non-repressed state or the repressed state? Well, you see, Inducible operons are more commonly found in the repressed state, while repressible operons are more often found actively transcribing, thus are not repressed. So you see, lactose is a repressible operon because it is normally found in the DNA, but the lactose is able to repress it, causing it to train shape and not be able to fit. Whereas Tryptophan is an inducible operon where we need the tryptophan to form the shape that is needed to fit into the DNA. And it seems like there are no more questions, so that concludes our short demonstration.